Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. The Laker student section was celebrating Wednesday night in Paducah because for only the second time in school history, Callaway County is the boys' first region soccer champion. And now they'll be heading to the state soccer tournament next week to hope to keep this great season alive a little longer. The Lakers beat McCracken County 2-1 for the win and check out the closing seconds of the contest. It seems that one of the Mustangs took out a little frustration on Callaway's Ty Davenport just before the final whistle ended the game. Ah, it looked like that hurt. And then the Rat Pack stormed the field to join the celebration. By the way, several Lakers were named to the all-region team. And first-year coach Alex Walandro was even named the first region coach of the year. Yeah, he even sounds like a soccer coach when he talks. Congratulations, Coach Walandro. And welcome to this week's edition of Laker TV. I'm Jordan Young, along with rookie anchor Bradley Smith. Bradley, it's nice to have you up here today. Thanks, Jordan. It's nice to be here. Future vocational students here at Callaway can look forward to a brand new facility in the next couple of years. Construction is underway on Robertson Road for a new building to house the Murray Area Technology Center. And we've got an in-depth coverage today from Chastity Ross and Tana, Tana Robertson. Murray and Callaway have collaborated for many years at the vocational school, but now it is being relocated on Robertson Road. Actually, that was an agreement between Murray and Callaway both that came out of uh, some negotiations they had several years ago and hopefully it's you know it's going to build the career readiness side of our school system. The vocational school offers a wide variety of classes from welding to carpentry. The uh, groundbreaking was in June and uh, they're supposed to be done about August 1st. It has been planned for five years and Five years prior to that, they were working on it. The two school board were working on a joint venture. The first challenge we had was finding, finding a suitable location. Uh, we found one on Johnny Robertson Road. It took a little while to get things going. I think it's really neat that Murray and Callaway both have worked on this so hard. Some students and teachers are excited about the relocation, and some just don't know what to expect. I get to work with my hands and not sit in a classroom and do work on paper all day. I look forward to, to setting up the shop, the area, the way I want it to be. So, um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. I like the fact that there's multiple classes. I love being hands-on with anything. Uh, I look forward to having the extra students, hopefully. It's good for our program. For Laker TV, I'm Chastity Ross. Every day in America, thousands of students ride a school bus to and from school, and most of the time without incident. But every now and then, a tragic accident reminds us that bad things can happen, even on a school bus. October 19th through 23rd is National School Bus Safety Week, a time to emphasize the importance of making sure students experience a safe ride to school. Producers Deanna Rodman and Amber Stout remind us that student behavior on the bus has the potential to cause a terrible accident. A lot of the more common issues uh, involve maybe students arguing or fussing on the bus. Uh, and then we've also had some, uh, some real issues with fighting. Uh, we've had a couple of fights on the bus and stuff, so those aren't unusual. Uh, one of the main things is uh, that I'm concerned with and I'm charged with, much like the transportation director, is safety on the bus. Uh, making sure that it's a safe environment for us to transport kids back and forth. It's a really unique situation uh, on the bus because you have a, a single driver with approximately 40 to 60 kids on a bus and they have their back to them. And uh, that's why it's really important for us to have students behave on the school bus. My main concern on all buses are, are, are bus safety. 
uh, and uh, loading and unloading is a big part, but also how uh, students ride on the bus and that their behavior on the bus is, is a, one of our key issues. Heaven forbid, might a uh, tragic accident happen. Uh, whether uh, whether the students behind them distracted it, uh, the driver and the driver accidentally run over a kid or a kid got run over uh, unloading on the bus by a car. But that's my that's my biggest fear is, uh, is safety uh, the, that a kid uh, could possibly get hurt seriously. With that being said, a five-year-old kindergartner from Butler County, Jaden Hawkins, was killed right after he caught off the bus at his grandmother's house. I mean, that, that's just an example for me as, as an administrator um, to really try to drive home the fact that high school students need to behave. Uh, that was an incident of where that student was on a field trip, but the driver was distracted by things that were going on on the bus. I hope everyone here remains safe on the bus. Still to come on Laker TV, a look at Hispanic Heritage Month and also some information about what we'll be doing next week here at CCHS to stay above the influence. Stay tuned, Lakers. We'll be right back. Hey there, Lakers. This Halloween, we went around and scared our fellow staff members. Oh, I don't even have a mask on. Well, just roll the footage. In 2013, more high school seniors regularly used marijuana than cigarettes as 22.7% smoked pot in the last month. 90% of Americans with substance abuse problems start smoking, drinking, or using other drugs before age 18. 60% of seniors don't see regular marijuana use as harmful. 21% of high school students binge drink. Every year, approximately 5,000 people under the age of 21 die as a result of underage drinking. Stay above the influence. Rise above the above influence. The influence. You probably remember celebrating Red, Ri Red Ribbon Week back in elementary school, right? It's a national campaign to encourage young people to stay away from drugs and alcohol. And it's back next week in our schools. The ladies in the harbor say they'll be doing a few things next week to promote the cause. Okay, well for next week, for Red Ribbon Week, uh, we are promoting the national logo and the, the, their national campaign, which is called Above the Influence. So you will be seeing a lot of these signs hanging all over the building and we have students helping us actually to hang those signs. Um, so that, that is, we just want to let everybody know what that is all about and that's to go along with uh, Red Ribbon Week. September 15th through October 15th is recognized as Hispanic Heritage Month here in North America. Many students here are of Hispanic descent. So reporter Kennedy Kelly took a look at what this month really means. Each year, Americans observe National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Hispanic countries. Hispanic Heritage Month brings into focus 
all the different cultures that speak Spanish, all the way from Mexico, all the way down to Chile and Argentina. One thing you may not realize is that there are some students here at Callaway High that take part in experiencing the Hispanic Heritage Month every year. Uh, we try to tie in many uh, historical figures like uh, Cesar Chavez and we try to really deal with the importance of our race and our heritage. Victor says his Hispanic heritage shows up in his everyday life in many ways. Uh, a lot of people don't know but uh, I go to church on a Saturday and I attend Spanish Mass. Uh, Spanish Mass uh, I guess it would be like regular service, but it's just told in Spanish and it's really a cultural tie-in and I think it's really, it's really something great. With this generation, people are starting to realize the importance of celebrating the Hispanic heritage and embracing their culture. So I asked Ms. Parrish how she thinks this is so. Hispanic Heritage Month was determined to be, you know, a national month of celebration, of celebrating the heritage of the Hispanic people who have come to this country, help build it, help make it important, help uh, build this country to be the country that it is today. It's a good thing that we include them in part of our national celebration. In the 2010 census, people of Hispanic, Latino, and Spanish origin became the highest percentage of minorities in the United States. So that means that there are an increased number of Hispanics in the United States now than there used to be. They went from being the second largest minority to the largest minority. Not only are these Hispanic, Latino, and Spanish origins becoming more of a majority to America, they are affecting the American culture. The Hispanic culture has really made an influence, especially here lately. Um, just yesterday, I was at Walgreens and I was walking down the aisle and there on the end of the aisle, a whole display of Dia de los Muertos, things to celebrate, little mugs and little dishes and little hangings for the door and wreaths. And it says Dia de los Muertos, all in Spanish. But they're embracing the culture, even though it's not their culture. So I find that um, really exciting. Hispanics have had a profound and positive influence on our country. Through their strong commitment to family, faith, hard work, and service, they have enhanced and shaped our national character into who we are today. They are America. We are America. This year, the Laker football team has made a big comeback from last year's season, and one junior has definitely made a contribution to the team. Reporters Raceland Morris and Adam Otis have this week's Athlete of the Week. The Athlete of the Week is defensive middle linebacker and offensive lineman Colby Fulver. He has worked really hard at both, but he has a preference. Uh, defense, because they move from defensive end to middle linebacker get five extra yards to smoke somebody, so I'll take that any day. Yes. Along with the fact that Colby doesn't get much bench time, seeing as he is so important, he plays both sides, he's also one of the team captains on the football team. And do you think he's an example? Yeah, I uh, think so, but I don't know how the team thinks. Defensive coordinator Dylan Sonic brags about how Colby improves the defense line and helps keep up the defense. Uh, Kobe Culver plays middle linebacker for our defense, and he is uh, very important to our defense because he kind of frees everybody up um, on the outside of the box. But what he does is he takes care of calling the front and calling the run strength, calls our stunts, um, and just makes sure our D-line and our other linebackers are getting lined up. Good luck to Kobe and the rest of his teammates. Callaway travels to Logan County High School in Russellville tonight, and the Lakers are looking for a win number four on the season. And we hope you'll join us again next week for a scary edition of Laker TV. Have a great weekend, everybody. Ooh.